Good morning, brand DIYers. It is Mark here. How are you doing? Uh, it is Friday. It has been an absolutely insane week here. I hope you're having a good Friday and I hope you're heading into a good weekend. Well, let me just straighten myself out here. There we go. Um, and I want to finish this week on a very, very interesting topic, something that is very personally interesting to me and uh, I think is very important for any brand DIYer who is hoping to build a brand and get a lot of attention for it. And that is messages that provoke. Now, I wanna give you a bit of a history lesson, so bear with me. 21 years ago, photographer Oliviero Toscani uh, was fired from Benetton. That was about 2000. Why was he fired? because in 2000, he did a United Colors of Benetton ad that was titled, Looking Death in the Face. Uh, and the ad, I remember it, it was 26 death row inmates looking out, pictures of these inmates, snapshots, with the headline, Sentenced to Death. What happened when they ran that ad? Murder victims, families, the ones who had been killed by these guys on death row, they lobbied retailers, they lobbied consumers, sales went in the toilet, department stores dropped Benetton, the state of Missouri filed a multi-million dollar lawsuit claiming that the pictures of the inmates had been taken under false pretenses. Now, this was not a surprise to Benetton. This was nothing where they went, oh, we did something wrong, sorry. This was the straw that broke the camel's back. It was the nail in the coffin. And it was the point where Benetton just said to Toscani, you know what, forget about it. So this, at the same time, was the ending point of one of the most experimental and controversial advertising campaigns of the 20th century. I'm here talking about the Benetton campaign 20 years later. Will people be talking about your campaign 20 years later? Toscani, the photographer, there's a biography about him. You can watch it. It's very, very insightful. He shied away from nothing. And for Benetton and Toscani, this ambition and this bravery and this willingness to cross social taboos paid off very much culturally for the world, I guess, started conversations, and financially for Benetton. Now, in case you don't know, Benetton is not a newspaper. It's not a TV station. It's not Amnesty International. Benetton sells sweaters, okay? Benetton sells sweaters, and that, I think, is the linchpin to this entire show. Murderers on death row, Benetton sells sweaters. Now, provocation through outrage or shocking people, it's one of the best ways in the world to get attention. Yell fire in a crowd at theater. You will get everybody's attention, I can guarantee you. But yelling fire isn't probably the best thing to do in a crowded theater. It might get you attention, but it gets the wrong kind of attention. And in the case of Benetton, you gotta make sure that the shock is in service of the brand. And even though it seems fairly clear in the case of Benetton, we all went along with this as Benetton pushed the envelope further and further. And that line of where does it just become shock and where does it pay off the brand? It's really fuzzy. So I want to go back to the start of this campaign to illustrate my point that this doesn't happen from one day to the next. Oftentimes, shock and outrage for the wrong reason is the culmination of a long journey. Benetton started with Toscani in 1983. Prior to that, they were um, working with J. Walter Thompson Advertising. And Benetton's ads back in the JWT days were nice, entirely ignorable. 
They did, however, come up with a great line, which was called the United Colors of Benetton. And if you think about it, what an obvious yet obviously brilliant idea. The whole idea that we're very, very colorful, but our colors all get along. That's a really cool line. And it does have a sort of a social context. Can't we all get along? Hey, let's put on a colorful sweater. You put on a colorful sweater. I'll put on a colorful sweater and we'll all get along. It's nice. Well, Tuscany was brought in uh, to run the advertising. He's a photographer with a series of poster campaigns that Benetton did all around the world. And his initial ideas were very much in line with that. However, what he started to do, his pictures didn't just show people getting along. His pictures started to show people of different races getting along. People young and old getting along. Gay people getting along. Back before it was a thing, Tuscany was all about pushing the diversity and inclusivity boundaries. And you know what? The ads were great. Because every time he came out with an ad of somebody, for example, a gay couple kissing, uh, people would go, oh, oh, that's shocking and horrifying. But, you know, wouldn't the world be a better place if we let gay people kiss just like everybody else can kiss? And those are really nice sweaters, too. So it was a good campaign, and it kept going in this direction for quite a long time. And gradually what started to happen, and we could track this year after year as every new campaign came out, they started to push a little bit further and a little bit further. In 1993, they turned a corner. This time, the lead ad in the campaign, instead of happy people, gay, straight, young, old, multiracial, kissing, celebrating, having fun together. The ad featured a bunch of vials of blood, tubes of blood, test tubes full of blood. And each test tube had a name on it. I guess the message was that no matter who you are, we all, underneath it all, are the same, which is a pretty good message. No sweaters though, remember? Benetton sells sweaters, they sell socks. United Colors of Benetton, huh, I guess maybe red, but you're starting to squint kind of hard going, I'm not sure I see where this relates back to sweaters. Now this started or triggered a whole new wave of Benetton ads where it became more and more clear that the intent was to shock, not sell the brand. There were pictures of the Bosnian War. There were pictures of a baby with an umbilical cord still attached. Now you can imagine, it's a natural thing, baby with an umbilical cord attached, nothing more natural in the world. However, uh, you're driving your car on a Monday morning with your cup of coffee, still kind of bleary from Sunday, and a huge billboard with a baby covered in blood is the biggest thing you see on the highway. Well, I don't know if that's exactly the sort of message that you want to get where you go, oh, those Benetton guys, I wish I could have some of their sweaters and socks. Doesn't really get that message across. There was visuals of a dying AIDS activist. I'll never forget that one. It was, it was a shock. Now, did it pay off? Yes, it did pay off. Every time Benetton ran an ad like that, it created a huge uproar. I remember there was one with uh, 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 the Pope kissing one of the leaders of the Islamic church, a Photoshop photo, huge uproar, huge. The AIDS activist, huge uh, uproar. Bosnian prisoners of war, uh, Bosnian violence, dead people, huge outrage. But every time it put uh, Benetton right on the headlines, on the front page of the newspaper, and every time that happened, Benetton said, well, any press is good press. Thank you very much. We'll take that to the bank. Toscani, um, if you watch the bio on Toscani, he justified it in a very Italian way. 
and I'm not being, I'm being stereotypical, but in a very European way going, huh, you know what? It isn't our job just to sell clothes. It's our job to be political, to be activists and we're, go to hell the rest of you. However, the time was ticking down. In 2018, Benetton released an ad with a boatload of migrants coming from Northern Africa being rescued in the Mediterranean Sea. Now, this wasn't that long ago. We probably all remember it was a huge uproar because what was happening was these people were coming north and they were being turned away by the Italians. And consequently, they were dying at sea. They were drowning and there were pictures of little kids drowning and dead being washed up on the shore. It was horrible. Benetton goes in and does an ad with a picture of that. So that was kind of the beginning of the end. Uh, and that then led to the death row ad and that led to Toscani being fired in 2000 from Benetton. Now, that is core to what I want to talk about today. And I think rather than explaining what the learnings are, I think it's fairly obvious. Provocation, outrage are extremely effective ways of getting people's attention. And as Benetton demonstrated, getting people's attention can be a good thing financially. And maybe as far as opening dialogues about what the boundaries of our accepted status quo are. And should we be thinking beyond that? And should we be more compassionate? However, the campaign jumped the shark. And I think it happened gradually from 2013 to 2020. In that Benetton lost the script to the play. And they said, no, it's about outrage. And if we create enough outrage and we keep ramping up the outrage, people will continue to be outraged. And every time they do, they will buy our sweaters and socks. And eventually people had had enough and said, screw you, Benetton. We don't want your sweaters and socks. We think that all you're doing is commodifying social causes. That is making social causes, attaching yourself to them just long enough to make money on them. It's the worst kind of advertising. Of course, Benetton would argue that it was brand activism, a brand feeling a higher obligation to alert people to things that are wrong in the world. Bullshit. If that brand is Amnesty International, yes. If that brand is a massive charity like UNICEF or World Vision, yes. But if that brand's only interest in showing a boatload of migrants being rescued at sea is to sell sweaters and socks? No, because then all you're doing is exploiting people and showing the worst of our behavior in order to sell sweaters and socks. The lesson from all of this, I would highly encourage any brand DIYer who wants to get their message noticed to push the boundaries to put images together with words that make people think, that maybe make them reflect and go, huh, that's an interesting perspective. And you know what? That totally relates to their tagline, United Colors of Benetton, or whatever your tagline might be. You have to make sure that every time you provoke people, that it leads logically back to the product that you're selling or the service that you're providing in a way that makes people go, I get the connection. If you want to create just pure outrage, yeah, if you're a creative, you might win awards for a while, but people will hate you because what you're doing is effectively selling out the whole business of communication and advertising. I mean, not that it hasn't sold out bad enough already, but you're selling it out by saying, as long as I can shock people, I can sell stuff. And all that does, it paints your brand as the lowest of the low, one of the exploiters. So I hope this has been helpful because I know that all of us have been in that situation before where we go, huh, maybe we should try something outrageous. It's okay. We can do that. And you know what? Consumers will tell you if you've gone too far. But if you're wondering 
if you're pushing it too far, I would ask that you dial up a story or two about the rise and fall of Benetton and Olivero Toscani and the campaign that finally broke the camel's back. I hope you have a great weekend. Look forward to seeing you next week. We've got some great shows lined up and it looks like the sun is going to shine for us. Take care.